All right, welcome to Learn SDR. I'm Prof. Jason. Now we're going to talk about transmitting data. And we're going to transmit data from the Pluto SDR to an RTL SDR. And the simplest way of transmitting data is called on off keying. And this method is kind of similar to Morse code, where you either turn a carrier on or you keep the carrier off. And so we'll, uh, we'll modify the flow graph that we had from the previous example and add some source of data that actually turns the the carrier on and off. It modulates the data. Um, sorry, modulates the, uh, the carrier by the data. And this will be our simplest of several ways of sending data. We'll, we'll build up to a sort of more, more, uh, more common and more useful and much more frequency uh, efficient methods over the next couple of lessons. OK, so last time, what did we do? We had a signal source whose frequency we can control. We looked at it as we always do. And we also sent it out to a Pluto transmitter, a Pluto sync. And we had an RTL source, which again, the first thing we always do is just look at what's coming out of it. And let me delete that block since we don't want to uh, tempt fate and have two out of sync clocks uh, fight with each other and eventually stall out. So uh, the first thing we wanna do is we don't just wanna transmit a cosine for all time, we wanna transmit data. So we want to turn this cosine on or off based on some data. So let me move this down here and let me break the connection with all the things that, that we're going to do with it. And what I want to do is I want to take this signal source and multiply by either a zero or a one, depending on what the data is. So let me look for a multiply block. And I will have my complex exponential carrier wave multiply our data, which I'll come in from the top here. Um, and then I'll send that out. Well, I'll look at what we're transmitting in time and frequency, and we'll actually transmit it. All right, so what is, oops, what, how do we, uh, how do we make data to, to multiply it? And I'll, over the next couple of lessons, I'll build up more and more sophisticated ways of making data from various sources. And eventually it'll be more and more and more realistic in terms of getting data from a source that you might actually want to actually get data from. But for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just list, list the data kind of explicitly. So uh, there's something called a vector source, which is just a source that spits out whatever you, whatever you give it. So let's give it a list here. So the default is to spit out 0, 0, 0. So let's, let's do 0, 1, oops, 0, 1, uh, 0, 1, maybe 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, something like that. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's a nice, uh, nice set that we can look at and see. And I can choose what data type I want to output. I'll just keep it complex, so we'll turn these zeros and ones into complex numbers, zero or one. Uh, that's easy, because I don't have to do any conversion. But I don't want to do that every sample. I don't want to do that at a megahertz. So what I want to do is, before I multiply these things together, I'm going to repeat each of these data bits some number of times. And the number of times that I want to repeat, I'm going to I'm going to give that a variable name so I can use it down down at the bottom, and I can change it, and both will change together. So I'm going to call that samples per symbol (SPS). That's a pretty common common name for this. This is samples of analog to digital or digital analog converter data samples per symbol. So symbol is, in this case, it's just a bit, but in general, we can send more complicated data. So a multi-level or multi-complex number, each of those things is going to be a symbol. And I'm going to have 100 samples per symbol. So in GNU Radio, you have to keep track of the sample rates yourself. And the, even though I've defined this sample rate here, the only way that gets instantiated is I'm actually using it in the Pluto SDR sync where I'm sending out data 
And I'm choosing to use the same sample rate, although I didn't have to, in my RTLS DR source where I'm receiving the data. And that sets a physical clock that buffers some data and then spits it out at exactly a megahertz. And so we could trace back here. So this time sync and this frequency sync and this multiply all have to operate at that sample rate. The signal source has to output samples at that sample rate. This repeat block, oops, I have to call this SPS in order for it to work properly. This repeat block will output samples at that sample rate, but it will input samples 100 times slower. So these bits here that I've, that I've set here are going to come out at 100 times slower than a megahertz. So that they'll come out at 10 kilohertz into this repeat block. And then each of them will get repeated 100 times. And that will go into the rest of the flow graph. So that will be our transmitter. And let's just look at what we're transmitting and then look at what comes out of our receiver. All right, that worked. So here is a uh, fre frequency spectrum of what we're transmitting. And here is the frequency spectrum of what we're receiving. It looks pretty similar. Here's the time stream of what we're transmitting. Here's the time stream of what we're receiving. And it looks a little bit different. And again, this is because of this clock offset problem. Let me actually bump up my signal frequency a little bit just to, to show maybe more simply what this, what you might think this would have looked like. So if I pause this by middle clicking and saying stop, I can see my data bits here. So zero and multiplied by zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. And now I'm back to zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. Uh, and, and my receive, if I stop that, I can trace my bits here too. So zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. And then back to zero one zero one zero zero one one. So, in terms of the amplitude of this complex exponential, since there is a real and an imaginary part, um, I'm getting out what I put in, and I can I can measure you know the time from here. Uh, this starts at about four thousand microseconds and it ends at four thousand one hundred something microseconds. So that's that's about. Uh, the right amount of time for, for a, a single one of those bits. And if I were to, let me see if I middle click and I pull up uh, line markers circle, if I would actually zoom in and count the number of circles here, I should see that I get about 100 samples, 100 actual analog to digital conversions per, per bit, per symbol. So this is our first example of actually transmitting data and receiving it. So let me play this, start this, start this, and, and we go uh, and zoom out. So now they're on the same scale. OK, and by changing the carrier here, I can, uh, I can change where my, most of my power is located, either where I'm transmitting my power or where I'm receiving my power. Again, they're slightly off because of the different different sample clocks. Um, and you can see that reflected in the, in, the, uh, in the time plots also. Let me turn off the marker here. Now, how would we turn this back into, into bits? Well, if we didn't have the complex numbers, let me stop this for a second. If we didn't have the complex numbers, this might be a little bit complicated because we'd have to trace out a couple a couple cycles and ask, am, am I in a cycle or am I not in a cycle? But with complex numbers, I'm, I'm spinning around the complex plane at some frequency here. In fact, let me show you what that looks like. So the, the way we visualize that was with what was called a, a constellation plot. So QT GUI constellation sync. I'll just add this to my list of ways of viewing the incoming signal. And let me call this uh, receive. Remember, this is just sort of the real imaginary two-dimensional complex plane. So let me play that. That is down here. Now let me zoom to make it a little bit more 
Oops, that's, I don't like that. Let me zoom in like this. Uh, hold on. Well, one thing you can see is that uh, you can sort of see the discrete nature of what we're receiving here. Part of that has to do with the fact that our, our signal is kind of attenuated. So let me, let me pump up the gain a little bit. Oops, that's too much. And maybe I'll increase the sample frequency a little bit to get some nice sine, sine waves here. All right, so now, now what we see is that most of the points on the complex plane are either near the origin, near 0, 0, or they cluster around there, which again, I, I can't, let me try to zoom in. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like the unit. There we go. The axes roughly go from minus one to one and, and one to uh, minus one to one on both sides. So we have a, a circle that's about the same amplitude. And when we're transmitting a one, the data has magnitude one in the transmitter. Now, of course, that gets attenuated and then amplified by the transmitter and the gain. Or we have magnitudes that are around zero. And so we don't have to trace through many samples to look to see whether we're oscillating or whether we're not oscillating. The, the demodulation procedure in the receiver has, has already given us a much more convenient representation. So what we want to do is we just want to take the magnitude of this complex number when we want to start decoding this data. So that'll be the next thing we do. We'll take the magnitude of this complex data. So if I just type mag, there's something called complex to mag. That's kind of a nice, uh, nice block. And so now every sample will become the, the complex magnitude. And let me just continue the decoding here. So that magnitude is either going to be, well, let me, before I do that, let me, let me plot it just to show you what that looks like. QT GUI time sync. Uh, let me change that to be real floating point number. And uh, in order to put it on the same scale as everything else, let me multiply that by eight. And let me call this uh, receive magnitude. OK. So now if I look at the received magnitude, I have a nice square wave here that's, that represents the data. So let me zoom in on that. Let me zoom in again. So let me pause it. So you can see there's a little bit of noise, but I basically see here 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. All right, and you can see that the, the samples are pretty clearly either above some threshold or below some threshold. And at least with the gain settings that I happen to choose, that threshold is about 0.15, say. So there's another block I can use, which is called threshold. And I can set the, the level here. So I can set the, the threshold level. So I'm going to set the low threshold to be about uh, 0.1 and the high threshold to be about 0.2, say. And this, I could make these, well, let me just start out by making them both 0.15. So this is pretty much a, a straight threshold at, at 0.15. And let me do something else in order to show it. Let me keep only one sample out of every n samples. So I can threshold them all, but since we've got 100 samples per symbol, I can only keep one of those samples. And I'll get a pretty good representation of uh, what, what we want to look at, except I want to make this real. So I'll keep one in 100 symbols. And uh, the reason it's red is I think I need to connect that to something. So let me do time sync again. And I need to make this real. Uh, showing 1024, that's probably fine. Let me configure this to say 
Rx threshold so that we know what we're looking at here. Okay, so a threshold, as we'll see, is gonna turn this into ones and zeros. And let me actually put on the, put on the marker. And we pretty much have recovered our zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. With with the occasional error. Okay, we're back. Let me give you some homework for this one. And the the homework is that first of all, try to transmit other bit patterns, and second of all, see see how fast you can go. How fast can you transmit, and how much can you attenuate the signal, or how far away can you move the antennas and still reliably receive it? That'll be the two challenges for you to play with a little bit. All right, my battery, as you can see, is almost dead. I left my charger at, at work, 